Father, I want to thank you and worship you and praise you. I want to acknowledge you and to be mindful of you. I want to thank you for being able to be here. Thank you for each one that is. Help us this evening as we teach that we may, as you said, feed the sheep, feed the lambs. Help us to help one another, encourage one another. Help us to be what you want us to be. Please, I pray. Be with every request here this evening, Father. And be with the church. The community, I please pray. I love you. I thank you. Worship you. Ask for your help always. Need you every moment. And I thank you for your presence. And for being personal and intimate with your children. In Jesus' name we ask, and amen. 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 God bless you. Everybody have a good day. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> now, if anybody sees black on my fingers, I'll try to get it off, but I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to start off with two questions. Remember two weeks ago? Mm -hmm. And... Is God able? And God is able. <laughs> I still remember that. Now both of these are in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay? Question mark, exclamation point. <laughs> okay. Open your Bibles, if you please, if you would, to the book of Daniel, chapter 3. And here we have, of course you are familiar with this. It's very, one of them old, what they call it, Bible stories. It's not. It's it's a Bible story, but yet, don't misinterpret how I say that. It's not a fairy tale. It's a Bible story, actual biblical happening. All right, the book of Daniel, chapter three. I'm going to read verse fifteen through nineteen. Okay. Now, this is Nebuchadnezzar speaking to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three Hebrew children that were brought from Jerusalem to Babylon. Now you realize that there were three deportations. One in 605, one in 598, and one in 586. This one is 598. These guys were brought here in 598 BC, okay? Just wanted to share that with you, all right? Nebuchadnezzar is king. All right. Now, he made a giant statue of gold, and he expected one of everybody in his kingdom to bow before this statue, this idol. It was about 90 feet tall, if you read, if you, if you read it, about six foot wide. Made of pure gold. <laughs> <laughs> How would you like to take back your father? <laughs> it does <doesn't> the floor. <laughs> But you got to realize, but you got to realize, Nebuchadnezzar was considered of his day and time, he was considered one of the greatest kings in all the world. Mm -hmm. Babylon was one of the seven wonders of the world. I want you to realize this. This city was massive. Now, and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego were in his kingdom, in his court. All right? Now, if you be ready, he's talking to the three Hebrew children, 
Now if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Very well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour to the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Now pay attention to the last part. <laughs> and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Boy, he threw down the garden. <laughs> now, just for a moment, I want to go back to the book of Exodus, chapter 5, and verse 2. Moses and Pharaoh. You remember when God sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel? And Moses went before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? Mm -hmm. I don't know him. Right. Neither will I let Israel go. If you study this, at this day and time, Egypt at this moment had 2,000 deities that they worshipped. Mm -hmm. They had a God for everything. Okay? <laughs> Now, if you'd ever read the book of Acts, chapter 17, when Paul goes to Mars Hill, and he says, when I came here, I saw an inscription on a tomb with this, to the tomb of the unknown God. Just in case we left one out, we won't want to offend anybody, okay? But we all know that there's only one God. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> okay, now, let's, let's finish reading. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these are Babylonian names. They were changed from their Hebrew names. Answered and said, now pay attention. Answered and said to the king. I want you to pay attention. They're not smart alecks. They're not mean. They're not rude. They don't downplay him. They respect him. But listen how they say this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. You know what that means? In other words, we have no need to answer you. That's what that means. Okay? Now, look here how they word this. If it be so, if it be so, pay attention to the wording. If it be so, our God whom we serve, look at the next three words, yes. is able to. Is God able? God is able. You see, you catch that right here in both, both of them, okay? If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Look at the next three words. But if not. Now why do you think they said that? Pay attention. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. These men had faith and confidence, didn't they? Oh, my goodness. Yes, they did. Then, now if you read the history of Nebuchadnezzar, and if you go back and read the book of Daniel, this guy was a lunatic. Now, he literally was a lunatic, okay? Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was often to be heated. And if you read the rest of the story, you'll find out when the soldiers went up, it literally obliterated them because it was so hot. Now, I want you to pay attention here. Let's go back and look at verse 18. Now verse 17, God is able... Look at verse 18. But if not. Now I want to ask you a question. Why do you think in verse 17 they said, Oh King, God will deliver us. But if not, that's a positive statement. But if not. Why did they say that like that? <coughs> what? There you go. Thank you. Both answers are good. But here's what they're saying. God can deliver us. 
Now pay attention. He might not deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, but he will deliver us. Now what are they thinking? What are they saying? Either in this life or in the next, God will deliver us. It's kind of like the old song, we're a winner either way. Yeah. <laughs> now, go back to the book of Hebrews and read chapter 11. Look in verse 32 through 40. And I'd ask you to read those eight verses of Scripture because therein the writer to Hebrews tells us exactly what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was thinking and doing. He said, they look to a better resurrection. Amen. Even in the Old Testament, they believed that God would resurrect them and deliver them from death. Yes. Yes. So, and if we read the Old Testament, we'll find out that really the Old Testament does not teach the resurrection of Jesus very much. But if you read the book of Job, if you read the book of Isaiah, if you read the book of Jeremiah, and all the prophets, they give us a foretaste of a resurrection. Yes. And that is why they said... God will deliver us, O King, but if not, we still ain't going to bow to your God. <laughs> I love it. Now, is it that faith? Oh, okay. that's, that's great faith. Great faith. Now, if we read the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey says, <laughs> they were thrown into the fiery furnace, but there was a fourth man walking around Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now children, I find this totally amazing. I don't know any other way to say it, to describe it. I find it totally amazing. God was with them in the fire. You remember what God promised the nation of Israel? We read, go in and read the book, chapter Isaiah 49. When you walk through the rivers, when you walk through the fire, I will be with you. That was our lesson just a few weeks ago. What? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, turn over to chapter 6. I love the book of Daniel. I really do. I just happened to think of something. I was going to bring something. Forgot it. Well, okay. That'll be all right. <laughs> Go to the book of Daniel, chapter 6. Okay, I'm going to start reading verse 18, okay? This is Daniel in the lion's den. But I want you to, I want you to pay attention to those questions. Now here is... Cyrus, the king of the Medes and Persians, now has overtaken Babylon. Mm -hmm. They were destroyed. Persia now is the ruling empire. And, per and now Cyrus, the king, sits on the throne. All right? Now, let's read verse 18. Then the king, King Cyrus, went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. In other words, King Cyrus loved Daniel. Yes, he did. He really did. He loved Daniel. If you read chapter 6, if you read the rest of the book, you'll find out that he, he loved Daniel. He made him number one guy over his whole kingdom, and he had 120 provinces. Okay? So that's how much respect and trust he had in this guy. Mm -hmm. But you have always have somebody that's envious and jealous and they want, they want to put the screws to somebody. And the guy they wanted to put the screws to was Daniel, okay? Okay. But be careful. One of these days, what you've done is going to come back to haunt you. That's what's happening to these guys. They don't know it yet, but them dumb butts. <laughs> They're going to get what's coming to them. Now, look at verse 19. Then the king arose. You see, he, 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 he did not sleep. He did not rest. He, he did not want anybody to bother him because he was concerned about Daniel. Now, then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste into the den of lions. 
And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice. Does anybody know what that lamentable voice is? He was crying. Uh -huh. This man was ungodly, but he had respect for Daniel. Right. Mm -hmm. And you've got to realize this same Cyrus also issued the decree for the Jews to go back to Jerusalem. Yeah. Okay? Now, if you study the history of that, oh my goodness gracious. You see, he read the book of Jeremiah. That's where it was written at. Cyrus read the book of Jeremiah, and he found in the book of Jeremiah where God had said 70 years exactly. I will send Cyrus the king. He even named him. And Cyrus looked at that and he read that. And he said, my goodness gracious, this God's got to be something. And therefore, he let him go. And he loved the children of Israel. He really did. Okay. I don't know about you guys, but I love history. <laughs> I really do. And when he came, okay, I read that. He came, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king, now pay attention. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually, what did he say? Amen. Able to deliver. Is God able? Yep, he was. <laughs> From the den of lions, then Daniel, then said Daniel to the king, O king, live forever. You see how he talking to him? Respect. Mm -hmm. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lions' mouths that they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocency, inno, innocency was found in me and also before thee, O king, I have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him. Because what? He believed. In his God. Is. God is. Yeah. He is. Mm -hmm. He can. I love the next verse. <laughs> okay, let's read it. Okay. That's what it ought to be now. <laughs> people destroy people's lives. And just for that. And there's no. And just for that. And nothing happens to them. Yeah. And. As we said, you you put the screw. You try to put the screws to somebody. You're going to. It's going to come back and haunt you. So what happened to these guys? Their wives and their children. Mm -hmm. And before they ever hit the bottom of the steps, the lines tore them all to pieces. Mm -hmm. Children, I don't have to tell you that God does take care of his children. But now let me say this. Let me go back. You remember we go back to the third chapter. Oh, King, God will deliver us. But if not... Children, you are going to be delivered. Mm -hmm. Maybe not the way you want, but you're Amen. <laughs> Amen. You will be, you are going to be delivered. Well, this is the time. <laughs> you will be delivered once. This is the time. Right. <laughs> now let's go to the book of Matthew, if you don't care. I just want to show you these biblical statements. Excuse me. My nose is running. I don't know why. Matthew chapter 4. And this is John the Baptist. And I'll, I'll read again a few verses. Now here's John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. And here comes the Jews out to hear him and listen to him. And listen to what he says. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in the Jordan confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said to them, O generation of vipers, 
Well, he didn't miss words, did he? <laughs> he, he did not miss words. <laughs> oh, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits fit or meat or worthy of repentance. Now look in verse 9. And think not to say within yourselves. Darrell, you touched on this also quite a few times in Sunday school. Just because they thought they were Abraham's seed, well, we're made, we got it made. No, I don't think so. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, what's the next three words? God is able. God is able to take a stone and make a child out of it. Imagine it. <laughs> See, I had this stone in my garage, a white, big white, well, it's not so big, but it's, anyway, and I said, I'm going to take that tonight and just show them, and here, pick up a rock or anything, or imagine this, and God, if he wanted to, stop and think about that, God can make a child out of that. Yeah. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. I, all I can do is imagine. Yeah. God is able to take a stone and to make a child out of it. You're so irreplaceable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's turn to the book of 2 uh, second, uh, second Corinthians. 2 second Corinthians, yeah, I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. How are you, Mr. Mike? <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 9. Look at here. Let's read this. This is the Apostle Paul writing to the Corinthian church. And what? God is able. You know how many times these, just these three words are mentioned in the Bible? Just seven times. God is able seven times. But oh my goodness, it's a blessing. Isn't it? <laughs> and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. In other words, children, what's that saying? God is able to provide for you. And I didn't write this earlier, but God is able to deliver you. Yeah. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but here in a minute, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to pretend, so to speak, sometime in your life when you go through a rough time or a hard moment, or if you want to say, some people say it's a valley. I want you to be real still, and I want you to look, and I want you to pretend that Jesus, well, the Holy Spirit, not Jesus, the Holy Spirit of Christ, I want you to imagine that the Holy Spirit is looking directly at you, which He is. He's just invisible. And I want you to imagine that God is asking you, whoever you are in here tonight, I could call you all by name, but I want you to say, Katrina, am I able? Darrell, am I able? Connie, am I able? Mike, am I able? And what are you gonna say? Yes. <laughs> he is able. That's why we have hope. <laughs> yeah, it is. it is. Now I'm sure that all of you could give a, 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 maybe a testimony or whatever, but you stop and you think over your life, over the years, and since you've become a Christian, maybe some of the things you've gone through, the battles, 
And you're still here tonight, aren't you? Mm-hmm. How do you think you got here? You think you got here by the skin of your teeth? Yeah. Or do you think that God got you here? You didn't get here by the skin of your teeth. You didn't get here out of luck, chance, or accident. You got here because God is able. Right. And He brought you. Yes. Don't ever forget that. Okay, now turn to the book of Ephesians, if you would. Chapter 3. I love that. This is one of my favorite passages of Scripture right here. This is Paul again, writing to the Ephesians. Now, probably I would say, well, I would probably say all the disciples died a martyr's death, except for John. If you read the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, where Paul lists all the things that he endured, Jesus telling Peter, you're going to be taken where you don't want to go. Somebody else is going to bind you. Peter crucified upside down. The rest of them were flogged, put to death. Some of them burned at the stake. But if there's anybody that could ever write with 100% positive attitude and tell my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ that I'm telling you because I've experienced it. Paul's the man. He's writing from experience. And Jesus is writing from experience. Peter is writing from experience. John the Revelator, although he wasn't martyred, but he was put on the Isle of Patmos for the Word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. That island wasn't nothing pretty. Believe me, I read the history of that island that he was on. It was horrible. Yeah. That was why he was put there. Right. Because for the preaching of Jesus and for the testimony of Christ. But he yeah. wasn't martyred. Right. To suffer. That's why they Ephesians 3.20 Now Unto him, what's those next three words? That is able. To do exceeding (laughs) abundantly above all that we ask or think. Mm -hmm. According to the power that works in us. The power that works in us children is the Spirit of Christ. Now, here's what we can say, so to speak. God is able to uh, do more than we could ask or think. Ain't that amazing? Yes. Now to him is able to do it exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. God is able. Mm-hmm. Goodness gracious, aren't you glad? <laughs> all right, turn to the book of Hebrews. Chapter 2. Let's read verse 18. Hebrews 2, 18. Now whoever the Hebrew writer is, I do not believe that it is Paul. 100% I do not believe that. But I don't know who wrote it, to be honest with you. But I don't think Paul did. For in that he himself hath suffered, being tempted, what's the next three words? He is able to help or to secure them that are tempted. God is able to come to your aid, isn't he? able to come to your aid. How many times has God come to your aid? 
Do you realize, I want to say something to you tonight. God bless you. Do you realize, you as a true born-again Christian, now I'm talking about a born-again Christian. I'm not talking about somebody who professes. I'm talking, about some, or I'm talking about somebody that possesses. Because believe me, there are a lot of people who profess and ain't got it. Believe me. And I'm sure you might agree with that or might not. But God put you here for a purpose. He didn't put you here by luck, by chance, by acts. I hate those words. He didn't put you here for that. God has a purpose for you. Remember this. You may go through some hard times, but there ain't nothing going to defeat you as long as God brings it your way. Nothing's going to defeat you. The safest place you can be, remember this, the safest place you can be is in the will of God. And I don't care if there's bombs falling all around you and everything on each side of you is burning. If you're in God's will, that's the safest place to be. Remember that. Amen? And that is why, children, that is why it is so important for you and me, for us as Christians, is to grow in grace and in knowledge. Because as I said a few weeks ago, if the relationship is right, everything else will be right. The reason why people struggle so much and have a hard time is because the relationship ain't right. Amen. <laughs> Turn to Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, please. Hebrews 7, 25. Look on verse 25. Oh, I said that, didn't I? Hebrews 7, 25. Wherefore, he, what? <laughs> Also, you catch that word? Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever lives to make intercession for them. God is able to save you to the end. Aren't you glad? Oh, yes. Okay. Turn to the book of Jude. There's only one chapter in Jude. We turn to the book of Jude in verse 24 and verse 25. <coughs> This is a, a benediction mm -hmm. as he's ending this. Anybody know who Jude is here? It's the Lord's brother. The guy that wrote this is Jesus' brother, Jude. Okay? Now, who wrote the book of James? Who's James? The Lord's brother. So two of his brothers wrote two of the books of the Bible. James was also the head, the head, what was he? He was the head man of the Jerusalem church. Okay. Look here now. Now unto him, what's those words? <laughs> I just want you to see that. Bless your heart. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling or stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. 
You ever stop and realize that when God looks at you, He don't see your sin? You know what He sees? He sees the blood of Jesus. Thank goodness. Amen. Thank goodness. So when you and I stand before God, and in our relationship with God to God on a daily basis, our sin is covered and it's blinded, so to speak. God can't see it because of Jesus. Like we were talking about when we walked in a while ago, I, you, I said I wasn't very pretty. He said, well, you're pretty enough for Jesus to die for you. Well, I was really, really ugly. If you stop and think about it, in our sin, mm -hmm. but Jesus makes us beautiful. Right. Yeah. See, it's kind of like a pearl or you take a piece of coal, you put it under extreme heat, as black as it can be, but when you put that piece of coal under extreme heat, what happens to it? It becomes pure white. So Jesus takes a blackened heart and he makes a white pearl out of it, which is what we are. Think about it. <laughs> Amen? But always remember, here's the key. Think about this. Jesus sometimes turns up the heat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It takes heat to refine anything. Because sometimes you and I have to go through the fire. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the, the Bible does teach we will suffer mm -hmm. and we will be persecuted. Mm -hmm. Anybody that says that, you don't, you don't know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. The life of a Christian is a life sometimes of heartache and persecution. Mm -hmm. But that still don't take away from what we're saying, does it? No. no, because what did the Hebrew boys say? God will deliver us. <laughs> Amen. And what's Paul been saying? What's the writer of the Hebrews been saying? What did Jews say? My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> now, turn to the book of Romans. I think I'm probably going to have to skip some things here because there's one I want to bring this out to you. Turn to the book of Romans if you don't care. Children, I know I've said this to you, but God bless your heart, I love to teach. <laughs> I do. It thrills me. I get so excited. <laughs> And sometimes I jump up and down and get, I've been known for, as people says, to uh, go off on the deep end. <laughs> but I haven't done that here. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Romans 16, 25. Now, it is not exactly worded like I've been, but, but if you use a train... The, translations but let me read this to you now this is Paul again now to him that is a power we could translate that into what yeah. God is able mm -hmm. now to him that is a power to establish you oh according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began so children, here's the bottom line. And I think that as we, or I think you probably would agree with this if you would pay attention, people today are doing everything except preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. They want to tell you stories and <coughs> preach the gospel. Yeah, that's right. Now, God is able to establish you. <laughs> okay. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> turn to, I'm going to stop. No, no, I ain't going to stop. But turn to the book of uh, Acts chapter 20. I'm going to skip some stuff. And uh, I want you to see a couple of things. Turn to the book of Acts chapter 20 and look in verse 32. Look at verse 32, Acts chapter 20. Look here what Paul says. 
And now, brethren, I commend you to who? To God. To God. And what? To the word of his grace. What's those next three words? Which is able. <laughs> to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Build you up and give you an inheritance. My goodness gracious. You know some of the greatest church services I've ever been in was just me and Jesus. Yeah. I wasn't in a church building. I was at home or driving in my truck. Mm -hmm. Some of the greatest services I've ever been in is just me and Jesus. I got news for you. You don't have to be in church to get a blessing. No. No. You don't have to be in church to be saved. No, no. It's a good place to be. But Jesus, honey, yeah. fills the world. Yeah. And wherever you are, He is. Remember that. Now, <laughs> let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 9. I'm going to skip a few things, but I'm going to end with this right here. You remember what I was, said to you a while ago? You said, well, you said a lot of things, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think you'll get this when I, when I said that. Now, pay attention. Matthew chapter 9, verse 27. I'm going to read verse 27 through 31, the rest of the chapter. And when Jesus departed there, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, pay attention. And Jesus said unto them, Believe you that I am what? Amen. That I am able to do this? You see what I said earlier? There's going to be some times maybe in your life that the Holy Spirit of Christ, because Jesus sits on the right hand of God. He's in heaven. The Holy Spirit is what's active in the world today. He's the one that works for and with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I want you to imagine whatever situation you may be in in life, and Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and you are all alone and you're facing one another. And look at these blind men. They wanted to, to be healed with their blind eye. And Jesus said, do you think I'm able to do this? Because you have to believe he's able. Or they wouldn't have asked him. Right. Pay attention. Okay. Jesus said unto them, or we might say, do you believe that I'm able to do this? He said unto him, yes, Lord. And only then. Now I want to ask you a question. If the answer had been reversed, no Lord, we don't think you're able. What would have happened? He would not have killed him. That's what I want you to see. The next time you may be face to face with Holy Spirit, you and Him, you may be down and out, you may doubt, you may be confused, you may be up against it. And imagine yourself with Jesus, the Holy Spirit, in a room. And he's asking you, do you think I'm able to do this? What are you going to tell him? Now, we're going to reverse the table here in just a minute. Here's what I want you to see, okay? Do you believe that I'm able to do this? They said unto him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, Look here. According to your faith, be it done unto you. Mm -hmm. That's why you pray believing. <laughs> <laughs> and their eyes were opened, and Jesus immediately or straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. <laughs> But they went their way to part and spread the brain. Well, you know. <laughs> Lord, it's kind of it's kind of hard when something great happens to you. It's kind of hard to shut your mouth about it, ain't it? <laughs> now I want to ask a question. We'll close with this. 
Can you, I'm talking to me, I'm talking to you, can you or are you limiting Jesus to what he can do in your life? I think you do. <laughs> you see what Jesus said here? He said, do you think I'm able to do it? They said, yeah, Lord. He said, then you receive. according to your faith, your eyes are opened. Now, pay attention. Let's go to the book of Mark. Chapter 6. I'm going to read six verses. And then we'll close with this. And he, Jesus, and he went out from there and came into his own country, which was Nazareth. And his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From where hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works God is able are done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter? You see, there's the, there's the doubt. Uh -huh. yep. There's the doubt, children. Yep. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah? See, Jude. Mm -hmm. Simon. And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own relatives, and in his own house. Pay attention to the next two verses. And he could there do no mighty work. Why? Because they had no faith in him. And he could there do no mighty work except that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them and he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went around about the village teaching. Is God able? God is able. The Bible teaches that. You've already seen it. But then I want to come back with a question. Can you as a Christian limit God to doing something great in your life mm -hmm. because of your unbelief. Mm -hmm. Now the rest of the story. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> This is an illustration. I like baloney. Now, don't misinterpret me. You can be a baloney sandwich. I'm happy. But it'd be like going, sitting down to a five star restaurant, and the waiter comes around and he says, You can have anything you want. And you say, Well, I like to have a baloney sandwich. <laughs> and he'd say, And why are you here? <laughs> when you could have anything you want, right. you choose a baloney sandwich. Nothing wrong with baloney. Well, I'm going to tell you what, when I go to a restaurant, I don't have bologna. I have steak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> a lot That's kind of like it is with us sometimes as Christians. Mm -hmm. You accept pit, pittance uh -huh. when you can have the gold. Uh -huh. yeah. Remember that. The next time you come into a situation and you and the Holy Spirit are together and you're going through a hard time and imagine yourself and he looks at you and he says, Donna, 
Am I able to do this? No. Katrina, Daryl, Mike, Roger, Roy, Margaret, Connie. June. <laughs> Barbara Sue. See, sometimes I, I lose my... <laughs> <laughs> okay. God bless you. Let's stand and be dismissed if you don't care. Thank you all for your time and your attention. Miss Katrina, honey, if you don't care, would you dismiss us? Dear Lord, we thank you for this lesson tonight. We should never have to be reminded of how great and powerful and wonderful you are. But we have to be, dear Lord. And we thank you for teachers that remind us. And we thank you, dear Lord, that in spite of all you can do and all that you are, you still love us. And we are so unworthy, dear Lord. We're so unworthy of your love and your grace. Dear Lord, the God who would make the heavens and the earth and still loves us. That's amazing. And I thank you, God, that you do. And I thank you that you, you work in our lives. Help us, dear Lord, when we go out of here to be conquerors, conquerors and not be defeated, dear Lord. So often we are defeated in life because we let ourselves be defeated. And dear Lord, if we just believe in the power that you give us, dear Lord, we don't have to be defeated. I thank you. I love you. I praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you.